This is News Conference Extra with Conan Nolan. Good morning and welcome to News Conference Extra, a special segment of Today in L.A. Weekend. Joining us from Washington is Kristen Welker, host of Meet the Press, which airs every Sunday morning at 8 o'clock. So, uh, Kristen, um, Super Tuesday uh, on, is coming up. This is the big week. In California, we're looking at a low voter turnout. Uh, even though we have a competitive race for the United States Senate uh, and a, a ballot measure that's uh, being championed by Governor Gavin Newsom, my guess is that you're seeing that as well, low voter turnout potentially in other states. And it's one of the, uh, the consequences of a presidential race where it is, quite frankly, boring. Uh, we don't have a competitive uh, campaign on the Democratic side. We don't seem to have much of one on the Republican side. And, and that's why it's going to be very problematic to get people out to vote and excited about this election. How close is that to being accurate, accurate do you think? Well, I think you're right that we're watching turnout very closely. We'll have to wait and see if it actually winds up being a low turnout. In terms of the competitiveness on the GOP side, I had a chance to speak exclusively with former Ambassador Nikki Haley. And look, she is 0 for 5. You are not wrong, Conan, in how you laid out this race. It hasn't been an incredibly competitive race to date. And it's notable that you use that word because I asked her if Super Tuesdays make or break for her. Does she have to win several states on Super Tuesday, have a strong showing to stay in this race? And she said what she needs to do is show that she can be competitive. What does that look like? Her campaign argues that, look, 11 of the states that are going to vote on Super Tuesday are either open or semi-open primary states, of course, meaning that independents, Democrats can vote for Nikki Haley. But that hasn't paid off so far, and she hasn't won some of the uh, open primary states that she's already competed in. So what will change? on Super Tuesday. She is crisscrossing a number of the states from North Carolina to Texas, Massachusetts, Maine, among others. She's going to be very busy heading into Super Tuesday. Will it make a difference? On Wednesday, if she hasn't had any W's, any wins, Conan, do her donors start to peel off? I think that's where you could start to see Nikki Haley and her campaign start to have some really tough conversations, but we'll have to see how it all shakes out. Uh, we have an interview today uh, talking with Governor Gavin Newsom, follows your interview last week, where he said that when it comes to Joe Biden, President Joe Biden's age, that's an advantage. He said, yes, experience, but his age, is it, it seemed to imply that, hey, uh, at 81, that's an advantage. At 82, it's even a bigger advantage, maybe at 83 and 84. Uh, the, the governor is doing everything he's, he's, he can uh, so that no one can say he didn't try to champion Joe Biden in this election. The fact of the matter is that ignores what the public is thinking about this president. Well, and you're right. And look, Gavin Newsom's a very strong surrogate for Joe Biden. That was on display during our interview. You're absolutely right. He gave this robust defense, it talked about how great it was uh, that he has this asset, this age, the wisdom that goes along with it. But I think that's why this State of the Union address, Conan, could be the most important political speech of President Biden's political life. Because, yes, he's got to make the case of officially for another four years. I think we're going to hear him do that. He'll probably introduce some new policy. But his bigger challenge is going to be the performance piece of this, to show people that he is in fighting shape, to beat back all of these recent critics and, quite frankly, the growing chorus of critics who say that they have real concerns about his age and his ability to serve. So the State of the Union is, yes, part policy part politics, but also part performance. And I think that voters are going to be looking quite closely at all of those three metrics, Conan. Uh, we, we saw the president and Donald Trump at the border this past week. Mm -hmm. So w one got the impression that after the Senate uh, pa didn't pass, actually killed the bipartisan compromise because Donald Trump uh, wanted them to, meaning Mitch McConnell no longer has control over his caucus, uh, that the White House would be pounding that. Listen, we wanted to solve this, uh, but, uh, but it, was, it was Donald Trump that got in the way. We saw a little of that at the border, but it was the first time. And one wonders whether the Democrats or the White House is concerned about making too much of that because of all the progressives, including Alex Padilla of California, who voted against that bipartisan measure and thought that the administration had given away the story when it came to immigration reform. 
Well, I, I think you're right. I think they are trying to walk a line to a point. But look, President Biden was at the border and he is selling what he would argue is a more humanitarian approach to border policies. If you look at the polls, Trump gets higher marks when it comes to handling the border, but Biden gets higher marks when voters are asked who is more humanitarian. And he talked about that bipartisan deal. He even extended an olive branch to former President Trump saying, work with me on this. Let's get something done. I think going back to his State of the Union address, I think you are going to hear him talk about the border. I wouldn't be surprised if he unveiled some new executive actions as it relates to the border. We've been talking about that. He is eyeing some new potential uh, executive actions when it comes to things like parole and asylum. Will they be ready in time for the State of the Union? I think the big takeaway here, Conan, is the fact that the border is going to be one of the biggest issues for voters heading into 2024, and you have both sides trying to figure out how to get in front of it. Uh, and who's on the program? We have an exclusive interview with Nikki Haley. I can tell you I had a chance to talk to her. She's defiant. She says she's not going anywhere. I said, what does it take for you to stay in this race after Super Tuesday? She said she's got to show that she can be competitive. What does that look like? Will she be able to actually win a state on Super Tuesday? So the pressure is on her to perform. I'm also going to speak exclusively with Congresswoman Debbie Dingell of Michigan. I'm going to be talking to her about the fact that more than 100,000 voters in Michigan voted uncommitted a protest vote for President Biden's handling of the war in the Middle East. How concerned is she about that protest vote? And then we're going to hear from Steve Kornacki, who will break down the state of the race and also give us a real reality check on the vulnerabilities for both Biden and Trump as we head towards what looks more and more like a rematch between the two of them. Conan. If Nikki Haley wins a state, that would be a that would be a huge story. Uh, Christian Welker of Meet the Press, eight o'clock. Thanks very much for taking the time. Thanks. On NBC4's news conference program at nine o'clock following Meet the Press, we will be talking with Governor Gavin Newsom about the race for president, as well as his effort to pass Proposition One, a bond measure which would fund mental health facilities in the state. It's apparently starting to lose steam, according to the most recent poll. That's news conference at nine o'clock following Meet the Press. We'll see you then.